Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdud's Newsstand, and I want to talk a little bit about an email I got. I want to talk about why people root for failure and answer a bit of a question that we've talked about from time to time on this channel, but never really dug deep into the ideas behind it. So what I got was an email that says, hey Nerdette, love your show. You are always pointing out the truths that the anti-SJWs are going on about, including the death of the comic book industry. Why do you think that these people root for failure in comics or really any media? And I think that's a really good question. I love this idea. If you ever have any questions, email them to me. I love interacting and being able to make this more of a community setting than anything. So thank you for the email, but let's talk about this. There are a lot of reasons, in my opinion. Now, of course, this is all subjective, but why people root for the end of an industry or, oh my God, Disney lost $65 million uh, compared to their billions and billions of dollars, right? You have this investor call and they're talking about numbers and people spin it and turn it and put it into the narrative. And that's pretty typical of any media. And that's really why I've always pushed for do your own research. Look things up by yourself. Make sure you're educated on the facts. And if it is an opinion, make sure you state it is so. So why do I think? I think there's a multitude of reasons, to be honest with you. I think there are a group that are like, look, the comic book industry is failing. I can save it, by the way, by my $25 comic book. There is definitely that group out there. And I do think that it is, in, from a business standpoint, having an enemy, it makes sense. I'm not saying it's a good moral practice on way to do things, but from a business standpoint, competition is always good, right? So looking at it from that standpoint, I understand what I don't respect about it is competition is one thing. Like, oh, my comic sold a thousand units. Yours only sold 800. Look, you know, it, a friendly rivalry, right? But it's not a friendly rivalry. And it's um, the core of it is misinformation and lies. And that's what really bugs me about that sort of situation. But you know what? Don't hate the player, hate the game, right? So that is one section. That's just one little subsection. I do think that there is also a bigger subsection of people that are actually interested in comic books or these movies or superheroes or indies or horror, anything to do with comics and pop culture. They're actually more interested in the politics and the culture war. And that is a large portion of that group is the one that say, I don't like politics and comics. And by saying that, it shows kind of that I'm not sure what comics you've read, but politics were in and out. Now, I do take reason with that saying I don't like the nuance or the way comics are written. And I understand that point. I understand that there is some bad books out. Like, there's just some no excuses for some of the books that um, some are putting out, right? Um, but as far as that, I do think there is more interest in, in a culture war basis. You will see video after video going, ah, oh, manga is beating comics. Okay. Well, it, they're generally a lot more just trades. They don't have a direct market. You're comparing apples to oranges. And manga, the audience right now is massive. The manga audience is what comics used to be before they aged up with their audience. And one thing I do specifically like about manga compared to comics is it's got a starting point and it's not like, oh, we've got 80 years of history, right? And you're also getting a small subsection of what comes from Japan. So you're not getting every single book that comes out. You're getting the best of the best of the best storylines. So that also helps too. Now, um, in reality, obviously, manga is doing very well, but a lot of these people like to use it as kind of a way to defeat something else. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It can be if that's what you prefer. I can't get into manga 
like some other people can. I prefer Western comic books and I prefer, um, you know, DC overall and then image and then so on and so forth. But a lot of people really are invested in their politics and that's okay. If that's what you're interested in, you do you. But when you bring it to something that I enjoy and start basically spreading a bunch of stuff that doesn't need spread is really silly in my opinion. Like this newest thing I talked about on my community post with the copyright and Superman losing his copyright. Like, come in. If if you have two brain cells, you know that's not true. Rub them together. Do the work. Come on now. They're never going to lose that copyright. And as of right now, there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing even in the works. Um, It's all set until I think 2038 or 33. I, I don't have the information right in front of me. But even so. um, And I do think there is a large portion of this audience that feels disenfranchised in one way or the other. Now, what I mean by that is for a long time, geek culture was really just for true blue geeks, people that didn't dare say they were reading comic books. We used to um, we used to basically um, hide it in the wooded area when we traded our books, right? Because it was like an invitation to get beat up on. And I think... People miss that. They miss that camaraderie and that smallness. I also do feel, feel like people have been disenfranchised by when it comes to specifically stuff like the MCU, the race swapping, the gender swapping, them knowing those characters for so long and um, being unwilling to accept any other version of that character. It still blows my mind. It still blows my mind to this day that you can have characters like um, Superman who has heat vision. And his only weakness is kryptonite and he can fly and he can bend steel with his hands. But God forbid his son is bisexual. That's unbelievable. It still actually just kind of blows my mind. Um, and then there are those people that just love to hate. So I, <laughs> this is going to sound really uh, mean. But when I was in high school, there was another girl named Tristan. And I was always kind of the geeky, weird one in the corner. And she was super popular. And a couple years later, I seen her. And I was so excited when I seen her. I was so excited because she got fat. And I'm like, ha, 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 ha. Even though I was a dork, I didn't get fat. Like, I thought it was so funny to see this popular girl just fall from grace. Oh, my God. I'm making myself sound like a terrible person. Um, But people love that feeling of I won. I did it. I, I exceeded. Right. And I think that is, um, a way on social media. When you talk about likes and clicks and retweets and da, 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 it is another, you know, dopamine rush when you feel like you've actually achieved something. And then I do think that there is going back to kind of the spreading of misinformation, not necessarily misinformation on this account, but it's more like, I hate that term, by the way. I don't know what other term to use, though. Um, but it's more like only talking about the negative because it gets clicks. So you make people that don't necessarily read or keep up with comic book industry as a whole think that um, the entire industry and everyone in it and all the creators are so woke and oh my God. It's just simply not true, but nobody talks about Sean Gordon Murphy unless it's something bad. Nobody highlights what a good creator and what a good person he is, right? Nobody talks about Jeffrey Thorne and what a good person he is or Stephanie Phillips. Nobody talks about the good or Scott Snyder. Like, I could just keep going. There are amazing professionals out there that don't get the time of day because nobody cares. People love the drama. There are so many good creators that treat their people, their customers with respect, even just talking yesterday about Philip Kennedy Johnson, right? He's doing an amazing job. Uh, we had a little scuffle back and forth, but um, that's neither here nor there. He's always treated his customers very well, takes things in jest and does a great job writing stuff. Tinian, same way. Like most of the industry isn't woke. Most of the industry isn't putting out woke books. Most of the creators don't treat their people bad. 
You have people like just in my video earlier, Kelly Sue DeConnick, one line has her canceled forever, even though she's learned and grown and realized that that was a silly thing to say. With cancel culture, there is no redemption. There is none. When do you stop giving people power that actually don't have power? Like Max Visaggio, you know, the industry is well because Max is in it. Um, all right. Mags hasn't made a book for DC or Marvel in how long? Like, the woman has no power. Even going to people that have books right now, Vita Ayla, um, Stephanie Williams, just because they are making content that you don't like, that's okay. That, that core demographic, it doesn't fit into your mold, and that's okay. I have no problem with Vita. I reviewed their last book, I believe it was Nubia in the Amazon, and it was good. I had no issue with it. I have no issue with Vita. Um, I do think she kind of snapped at thinking critical, but I also think thinking critical in that situation was pretty freaking rude. He's been rude to me before. Um, but I still, I, there no disrespect whatsoever. I like Wes. I like his channel. I watched the majority of his videos. So, um, there's a lot of, Oh my God, the entire industry is woke. No, it's not. Actually, most of it's not. Um, and the stuff that you don't like, you just don't buy. It's that easy. Like, I'm trying to think, just talking here, of a book that came out this week that was quote unquote woke. And there isn't any that I can think of from DC. We've got some new stuff from Rosenberg. Got some new Venom. I mean, like... If you can name me one in the comments below, I'd love to know. And I don't even think there's any out by any woke creators. There's just this mass dis... Oh, I'm going to say that word again. Misinformation campaign. Oh, my God. I sound cringe. Um, That's going around to um help clicks and revenue and everything else. And, and most of it is highlighting one or two people and beating them down into submission and constantly, constantly bashing on them, bashing on every tweet, bash. It's just, it's enough, right? Like I, I, I got sick of it. I, you, you can only make so many videos about how you don't like Vita Ayla and, and expect people to listen. All right. Then don't buy her books. Don't follow her. I, it's that easy. It really is. Um, but as far as the industry as a whole, yeah, it has some issues. There is real issues that we could talk about. One of the issues that are real is, you know, stuff like with this this image um, union that's going on, right? But what is not real is that it is woke and infected by SJW libtards and everything else. Um, and it honestly is a mess, and that's what needs fixed is the um, oh, how do you say this nicely? The inability to communicate or make continuity work or be organized. It's just a mess. It's not woke. It's a mess. Anyways, so let me know, of course, what you guys think about this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.